Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 649. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why you might be receiving an inheritance. And This is very timely because there have been some studies done and there's more wealth transferring in the next decade than we have seen ever before in history. So while I can't guarantee that you'll be receiving an inheritance, let me share with you why it's very likely you might be receiving an inheritance sometime in the future. This article comes to us from the Los Angeles Times and was written by Ben Steverman of Bloomberg. And the title is, Trillions Will Be Inherited Over the Coming Decades, Further Widening the Wealth Gap. And it says, the rich aren't just getting richer, they're getting older. And fortunately for their children, they're set to leave plenty of money in the bank. About $36 trillion will flow from one generation to another over the next 30 years, according to a recent report from wealth manager United Income. The pace of bequests has already started surging. Americans inherited $427 billion in 2016. And by the way, at the time of this podcast, it's 2019. So this is the most recent data available. Up 119% from 1989, even after adjusting for inflation. Wealth equal to nearly two times the size of the U.S. gross domestic product is expected to be gifted to charities and heirs over the next few decades, said United Income founder Matt Fellows. It's a historically unprecedented amount that is almost incomprehensibly large. The beneficiaries aren't all that young themselves. The study, which uses Federal Reserve and academic data, shows that from 1989 to 2016, U.S. households inherited more than $8.5 trillion. Over that time, the average age of recipients rose by a decade to 51. More than a quarter of bequests now go to adults age 61 or older. Instead of diapers in school, inheritances are increasingly going toward medical bills and retirement savings, Fellow said. Even inheritances, then, are part of a dynamic that's widening the wealth gap between generations, Americans younger than 50 held just 16% of all investable assets in 2016, down from 31% in 1989, according to the Fed's Triennial Survey of Consumer Finances, leaving the rest to households 50 and older. Age inequality is most dramatic when comparing the oldest and youngest adults. In 1989, the median household aged 65 to 75 held almost eight times more wealth than families headed by 25- to 35-year-olds. By 2016, according to an analysis by the St. Louis Fed, the median baby boomer had close to 13 times more wealth than the typical millennial. While boomers as a group inherited trillions from their parents, most members of the post-war generation got nothing. About 20% of households have received inheritances, United Income's analysis shows, a share that's flat over the last 30 years. The good news is that these bequests are coming in handy. The median recipient gets about $55,000, which is more than double their typical retirement savings. Most inheritances are going to older adults who have little in the way of retirement savings, said Fellows, a former Brookings Institution scholar. People receiving inheritances are pretty middle class. The average inheritance received in 2016 was about $295,000, up from $169,000 in 1989 after adjusting for inflation. United Income, an online retirement planning firm, was founded in 2016 and acquired in July by Capital One Financial Corp. As more Americans live longer without the safety net of a traditional pension, the data suggests they're spending frugally to make sure their wealth lasts. The result is more Americans dying before they can spend all of their savings. 
Financial advisors say they often need to encourage affluent clients to enjoy their wealth rather than hoard it. Only about 9% of estates consist entirely of a house or other property, United Incomes analysis shows. The average estate is 46% stocks, bonds, cash, and other liquid investments, giving an immediate boost to recipients' own retirement planning at a key time. The money left behind for middle-class Americans is dwarfed by that inherited by the children of the very wealthy. United Incomes estimates don't include gifts made during donors' lifetimes, a typical move in estate planning for the ultra-high net worth cohort, often using trusts. It's still found a widening gulf between the super-rich and everyone else. The median inheritance has risen only about $15,000 in three decades, while they've more than doubled for the 0.3% of Americans receiving at least $1 million. In 1989, their inheritances averaged an inflation-adjusted $2.7 million. By 2016, they were each getting an average of $6.6 million. End of article. What's really interesting about this article and this study is only about 9% of estates consist entirely of a house or other property. Only 9%. That's a lot less than I would have thought since real estate has gone up so much and the average estate is basically half stocks, bonds, and cash and other liquid investments, maybe like CDs, savings accounts, checking accounts, things like that, which tells me that a lot of wealth was created in the stock market and that people that invested in the stock market have more of an inheritance to be able to pass on to their kids. So I think that's a a very interesting statistic and one that just bodes well for our theme here of investing and building wealth and understanding that being invested in the stock market is one of those ways that builds tremendous wealth for people. If you're someone who's not expecting an inheritance, don't get depressed because you can always create your own wealth. And if you need some help with that, pick up a copy of my book, Your Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now. Or if you're really serious about investing for retirement and attaining financial freedom without complexity and without overwhelm, fill out the short questionnaire in the show notes and let's talk and see if it's a good fit for us. And just a reminder, we also have our holiday sizzle giveaway going where you're able to win one of 20 prizes. 10 lucky people will win my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio set valued at $197. Five lucky people will win my Wealth Heiress book personalized and signed by me. And five lucky people will win a one-on-one wealth mentoring session with me. All you need to do is leave a review for the podcast on iTunes or if you have an Android on Stitcher, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. And that will get your name in the drawing one time. And if you've read the Wealth Heiress book, leave a review on Amazon and that will get your name in the drawing two times. The drawing will occur on January 1st and winners will be announced on the first podcast in January. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.